Glory be to God, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of our loving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When I say Jesus Christ, do not ever count it as a religion, because I know that there are a lot of people who subscribe to our channel. They are unbelievers, but don't worry about, we are not here to convict people, we are not here to ask them, move from your, your religion and come to our religion. It's not about religious discussions. It's about the way to live your life. And Jesus came to introduce those principles, those doctrines, those methods to handle the challenges that we go through in our lives. There are various circumstances you go through, I go through, all of us go through. And what are the best means, mannerism to handle the challenges in life and be overcomers? Bible's speciality is, Bible builds people to be overcomers while they live their life on earth without hurting others, without harming others, without harming themselves. People commit a lot of, you know, a lot of people get into the suicidal thoughts and, you know, and they also end up doing that, right? Why? Because there isn't anyone who gives that hope and confidence. Therefore, they are able to overcome, right? Due to lack of confidence, there is lack of hope. Due to lack of hope, there isn't anything, um, certain for them right the the futuristic perspective it looks so uncertain and therefore they feel they are deprived they are lonely they are left out in the world and they are the only ones who goes uh, who who's going through these kind of issues the, you know these are the kind of thoughts which push, pushes a person into some sort of depravity and that's what exactly jesus had been taughting, uh, teaching through his doctrines and principles and commandments and laws to live that life in prosperity. And that's why when you come under this one name, you will see that you are a person who will be walking in light. There will be transformation in your spirit and renewal of mind, Bible says in Romans 12, 1 and 2. Yes, there is a little bit of religious aspect involved, but Jesus did not introduce religion. Jesus is the God to all, overall, right? And the God came in the form of that avatar you call it as, right? And God came in the form of incarnate deity. That is the immortal being of Christ, right? And there isn't any human being that rose on the third day and stood up. There is ev enough evidence that's been recorded. 40 days after resurrection, Jesus was walking across the ends of Israel and he was preaching and teaching and talking to people. And then he was lifted in the midst of the clouds, which was witnessed by large number of people. Even to this day, that history is existing. Yeah, 2000 years might have passed, 20 centuries. But the history is existing. Show me anyone who had gone through these kind of events. And therefore, yes, I will believe in that doctrine, right? And this Jesus tells, I am God, Father in me, and I in Father. And he starts to um, preach and teach and do miracles and do good to people and stuff like that. And Acts chapter 10, verse 38 uh, says that. You all will have to read that. Right. So therefore, if there are unbelievers listening to me, never ever count this as a religious preaching or teaching. Don't shut your ears, open your ears and listen, give it a chance. Right. And then you compare with whatever doctrines you're reading and all that. And please take the right decision and uh, may God help you. May the Holy Spirit help you. And importantly, the where the contradiction happens, I'll tell you, right. Where the conflict happens, Bible is very clear. Jesus is the life, the way and the truth, which means what he is the way to the kingdom of heaven. Whereas there are other religions, uh, other doctrines, which also tells the same thing. And therefore people are misled. People are being confused. Am I supposed to go by my forefather's tradition or what this guy is talking? And you don't know who I am. You don't know who the, you don't know who Jesus is. You don't know what the Bible is preaching and teaching. And that is where, you know, that narrow minded attitude, that blindfold thing comes. And that's why I'm saying, give it a chance. It'll be too late for you to repent, beloved. And God loves you. Jesus loves you. He died for you. He died for me, shedding his precious blood that you and I could be redeemed and delivered by his precious name, by his precious blood. And even to this day, right, other religions, you see that they sacrifice animals. Because without bloodshed, there is no remission of sins. Is also believed by other doctrines. But an animal's blood cannot cleanse your sins cannot forgive you, cannot bring you into redemption and deliverance. And that is where the Son of God, who had been conceived of the Holy Spirit, not born of a human being, was crucified on the cross by whose blood you and I are redeemed. 
warm welcome to the series where we are exactly talking through this genealogy and evolution of christian congregation or christianity christianity by uh, to many people it appears to be like a religion that's why i'm time and again emphasizing that please do not count it as a religion it was converted as a religion as early as third century by king constantine he commemorates and even before that in antioch they in the first century itself they called christians why because they want to protect each other why because they are being chased and killed right and they wanted a name therefore secretly they were forming this community and everyone are welcome right they never went and con condemned people bible believes in no condemnation while we live here our lives on earth there is no condemnation but yes the white throne judge judgment is full of condemnation and it will be too late for you to come to your senses and talk to god and yeah you you get into all sorts of troubles and problems and we have been dealing from the book of psalm 32 or chapter 32 psalms 32 joy in forgiveness and what are we discussing through this entire series this is 64th lesson in the series and we had been talking through the foundational principles based on which jesus built this congregation and why it's important to learn from jesus on this foundational principles is important because only then you understand that he never came to introduce religion but he came to introduce the principles and the doctrines that helps a person to live his life prosperous on earth and after that there is a life on earth and that there there as well is going to be prosperous too all right now the fifth principle we are dealing is the law of forgiveness forgiving one another is not easy let go of the sins that somebody commits against you and they deserve to be punished and you let go it's not easy and why it is not easy we are explaining and why it can become easy and what are the benefits when you forgive people is what we are discussing through these various uh, scriptural verses and references and preachings and teachings the psalm 32 is a very typical psalm and the psalmist is uh, making it very clear that hey money cannot bring the joy relationships cannot bring the joy right it, it is happiness right it's only for a moment until how long that happiness last right until you have get into a fight all relationships will end up in some sort of conflicts and fights and all that very very few and they reconcile right i'm not saying they don't reconcile of course they come together but that's why it's called as happiness why it's temporary right it's situational based but then regardless of any situation if there are few things that can get you joy bring joy definitely one is repentance the second is reconciliation and you know what forgiveness is also one of those there are few things that i want to list but this is not the time and session but joy is not situational based regardless of situation regardless of anything you get good or bad regardless of you you get it or don't get it no problem yeah you will be always having that joy which is the extremity of happiness happiness is expected to be wiped off when a situation changes when relationship changes when somebody says no to you when you want to you know be with them or stay in touch with them and stuff like that and they say no to you and we discussed from psalm 32 verses 1 2 and 3 we are done and i'm trying to finish it because i have many other things to discuss right and it's going to be a very very detailed discussion why because i will tell you the whole christianity or christian congregation or the principles of christ are forgiveness centric you know that it it somehow you know intersects there why because forgiveness is like a um it's like a venn diagram you can call it as right it's the center portion the center circle is forgiveness it intersects with ego pride guilt avenging attitude defense offense um and uh, revenge and uh, backbiters and gossipers murderers murmurers bloodshed everything you know what it's like a venn diagram multi venn diagram but the centric guy is forgiveness the moment that guy you know intersects with forgiveness he is no more a murderer the moment a gossip gossiper intersects with forgiveness he is no more a gossiper right the moment the guy intercepts intersects with forgiveness he is no more a you know a complainer or an avenger you know this is the beauty of forgiveness why because it believes in the principles of let go why because we all have fallen short of glory we all commit sin yeah is there anyone in this world that can say now i never hurt anyone you know 
is a liar. Bible calls him a liar. Absolutely, you are a liar. There isn't anyone who can tell that I haven't ended up in any conflicts. Yeah, I didn't no wrong to anyone. No one can say that. We all have done wrong at some or other points in our life. We all have hurt. We all have done mistakes. That's why you don't judge others. You don't go hard against someone else's mistakes. And God is going to come to you hard as well. The way how you are going to treat your fellow believers. The way how you are going to treat your wife, your own husband. And that it reminds like how much you love God. Or how much God is going to treat you in the same measure. In our previous session, we spoke about, you know, when I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groanings all the day long. The psalmist is exclaiming with certain agony in his heart. And he's talking about silence. And if you want to know more about it, please go to the previous session, right? And in continuation to that, Psalm 32 verse 4 says, For day and night in your hand, Sorry, for day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. God's hand comes heavy upon some people. You know, who are those people? Two categories of people. Number one category, I will talk about the good category. They are the believers in Christ, who believes in the principles of God, principles of Christ, the teachings of Christ, who have the willingness to repent and reconcile, who have the willingness to change, who have the willingness to always be broken, right? Many people you try explaining, this is where you go wrong, very adamant people. I have known many people, I have come across many such people in my life, very adamant to admit or very, very adamant to say sorry or very adamant to change. Adamancy is nothing but no willingness to accept the fault, no willingness to allow the changes to travel through them. Therefore, it only helps them to refine their bad thoughts, right? It only helps them to be, to, to, to come on the better side and therefore they are a blessing. They no more continue to hurt people. They no more continue to hurt themselves. You know, many people think they are hurting others, but they are actually hurting themselves, right? And they don't have to live in depravity and loneliness and this and that. But those people are believers in Christ and they make a prayer every day. Oh God, I would like to change. I'm willing to change, but I'm not able to change. Why? Because of my past, right? I've been a hard nut to crack. There is a lot of fat layer in your arteries. What happens? They do this angiogram test and all that. And they, they put that stent to release that block and stuff like that. Isn't it? The block gets released. Or sometimes they have to do the open heart surgery if the block is really terrible. And that block can, you know, cause death also. And therefore, the cardiologist makes takes that call after certain tests, whether what kind of thing they have to do. Sometimes what happens is we have a lot of blockage in our mindset, in our attitude. Why? Because we are so used to certain things. Or maybe you are attending a church where your pastor is a false teacher or a false prophet and he's been talking the doctrines reverse, right? Exactly opposite to what? It's paradoxical. Contradicting and that's exactly the reason why we kicked off another serious study on oxymorons Right your pastor could be an oxymoron and all his teachings are deception Right, and he has been talking exactly opposite to what Jesus says and you're sitting there and believing him for 30 years I've known many people in fact. I was myself there, but Sooner I got out of the deception and God helped me Holy Spirit helped me because I was not able to agree many things that you know, a few guys have been talking from the full pulpit and I would be asking God to explain me in some of my fasting and prayers and God explains. Even at your workplace, right? Your boss may say that I'm your boss. I dictate you do this. You don't have to do it. Why? Because he works for the same company as you work, as you do, right? Therefore, you, the, the, you do the right things for the company, but not the wrong things that is dictated by your boss because technically you don't work for your boss you work for your company but yes be submissive to your boss be respectful but tell that no respectfully you can say no respectfully always maybe you're going to be kicked out of your job for example he asks you to asks you to manipulate the accounts 
and he says yeah it can be adjusted in the next quarter but you're you're in the, you're the auditor right you're in accounts department and you're going to say no i can't do this because when we do this we camouflage it we manipulate and we are going to loot money and put the company endanger the company's growth that's why i'm telling you these teachings are really practical teachings but then you have the willingness the you know the blocker is your boss and you had been working with your boss always saying yes boss i'll do it why because you're going to be fired and you come and sob before god that same night saying oh god forgive me because i really want don't want to do this but if i don't do it this guy is going to kick me out of my job and what do i do for earning what do i do for living how do i pay my you know child school fees and uh, clear my credit card bills and electrical bills and this and that isn't it and many people repent 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 and but it's not repentance it's regret right they feel sorry but they are not able to come out of that habit um or come out of that situation because of certain um what is a constraint and the important constraint is economy right you lose your job you lose your living and you don't get another job uh yeah, and how, what do you do in that interval until you get a new job right many people are fearful but that night they sob before god they ask him to forgive but what happens is next day they repeat the same thing but they have that willingness in their heart they have the depression in their mind i'm not able to overcome this i'm not able to come out of this situation so typically what happens is like day and night they will be groaning in their spirit they will be depressed they will be into distraction they will be into heaviness they will be into burden right because why the word of god is pricking them word of god is two edged sword which pierces the heart and it brings that carnal attitude to your remembrance and it kills you know people who would go through such a feeling they really understand what i'm talking right why it's important to go through that and it's very nice beloved i'm telling you such a burden is nice because you are coming to light you are coming to god and you are coming to your remembrance that what you are doing is not right and you are living in this situation for many years many months some people may be many decades and what happens you are absolutely helpless and god is willing to help you why because you are praying each time god help me somehow i don't want to do this give me a different job and god helps you giving a different job and there you go and again land up in the same net and then again god gives you a different job right and sometimes you know you get a job where you don't have to get into any such malpractice or he changes your role your profile something like that so fine if it is work it's fine but how about family right you are you are always you always have to speak some lies to your wife because she is so sensitive even if you tell the truth the lady is going to definitely convert into some sort of assumptions and then she is going to taunt you many many husbands go through this torment and even wives go through the same torment therefore what happens is they con- consistently they keep on lying just because they don't want to end up in fight just to please the husbands but please the wives but what happens inside of them there is lot of burden i am not doing it right i am sinning speaking lies is a sin i am just giving you a few examples right to get you some facts some doctrines or what to say some I, it's about facts right it's a fact based discussion and then at some point of time you come to god and you ask him how long am i supposed to live like this god right and help me here i don't want to do this by but i end up doing this therefore god comes heavy upon you but then he's not going to punish you but he's going to redeem you that's why i'm separating into two categories first category of people are good category people he's going to change the situation probably he's going to change the heart of your mind heart of your husband's mind heart of your wife's mind or the heart of your boss and he's going to make a way and perhaps they 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 start to appreciate you saying that no what you're doing is right i was wrong and all that and a god can change the hearts of even the kings you know bible says that so it's not a big deal for god to change somebody's mind and get you that li- li- liberty or liberalize you and uh, free you from that bondage isn't it this is the first category the god comes heavy upon the situation not upon you heavy upon the circumstance or heavy upon your opponent the, fa- the, the what is that pharaoh guy gets warned in a dream hey that is abraham's wife do not lay your hand isn't it 
likewise many people are want of dreams and they would not go against their adversaries rather they would say please your your god is powerful and i don't want to touch you you know god can do anything he is wonderful god he is miracle working god that's a beautiful song right he is a miracle working god he is a miracle working god is the miracle he is the wonder he is the miracle working god he is the prayer answering god he is the prayer answering god he is a miracle he is a wonder he is a miracle working god wonderful song wonderful song right when you sing that song you got to think this one thing in your mind that god is limitless many people limit god's power and their prayer is also somehow positioned that way oh god i understand the situation is so big not sure how you are going to handle it please don't do that mistake with god it's like calling god a liar and you are challenging his powers and capabilities he is a supreme god he is supernatural god he is the god over the universe and there is nothing that is impossible with men it is impossible but with god all things are possible if god is for you who can stand against you bible says in romans 8:31 and matthew 19:26 some people especially i'm talking about the believers right they limit god saying that oh god i don't know how you are going to handle this you need any help <laughs> they they're almost willing to offer some help to god please yeah if you if you if you are capable to help god then why can't you help yourself and come out of that situation yeah you are helpless you say that god i am helpless i am unwilling to be in this situation i am unwilling to speak lies like this i am unwilling to camouflage and manipulate these accounts i want your help full stop stop there and end the prayer and walk out of the room it's enough god heard you walk out of the room with that confidence that my god heard me my god heard me he says my ears have never become heavy for your prayers my hands will never be shortened i am the lord who will help you my right hand will hold you firmly and i will not let you fall isaiah 41 13 says that isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2 says that his ears will never become heavy yeah with that confidence when you consistently pray god is going to work in in, in his time in a season sometimes he works instantaneously sometimes he replies after a year sometimes he replies after a week it depends and god is in control have that confidence and i have heard multiple testimonies where people come and tell you know confessing saying that god worked miraculously and i was saved right all right the second category of people you know who are they they are also believers but the difference i'll tell you they know that they are wrong but they would never confess that before god or men they would hide it secretly bury it secretly right under their heart the the bottom portion of their heart <clears throat> have these sedimented secrets yeah yeah because they enjoy that sin ah uh, they enjoy that pornography they enjoy that yeah um, that that manipulation they enjoy that uh, bribery they en- enjoy this they enjoy that why because they love to be on the devil's side and they love to be luxurious they love to always be rich they love to always never mind where the money is coming from i am giving my tight and offering regularly brother yeah that's the money of blood who needs that money you think god is running short of resources that he needs your help <laughs> there are a lot of people right belonging to other religion they make their gods and goddesses as their business partners and therefore what happens is they will loot around money uh, i mean they loot lot of money they te- cheat people and gain up money and they'll say 50% i give it to god therefore i am free of sin <laughs> really really your god appreciates that money of blood and that's not god that's devil sorry god god's eyes are eyes of purity bible says zakaria 4 and he can't even look upon the wickedness are you kidding me that you are going to make him your partner for all the wicked deeds that you have committed to enroll are you kidding me that your god needs that money of blood you cheat people you kill people and you make him a partner and say the 50% money to god and they go and basically you know drop that money in that offering bag and all that 
God says, money of blood, out of my sight. Out of my sight. You wicked servant, throw him into the place of torment. Matthew 24 and Matthew 35 you read. Uh, sorry, Matthew 25 you read. You will know. Matthew, uh, sheep versus goat. I have spoken a series, short series in that. It's in the playlist. Yeah, you are the wicked servant. Your attitude is corrupt. You have gone very, very closer with the devil. But you carry Bible. You carry, you wear that cross around your neck. You go and attend the Sunday services. You speak, oh, Jesus is my Lord. You see how he blessed me. Jesus did not bless you. This prosperity is not from the heavens, but this is pro this prosperity is from the devil. And you know what? The devil has powers to bless his people. That's why you will see that the, the, the top 10 rich people, they, they are, I'm not saying believers aren't rich, okay? But they are very few, very few, like micro particles. Yeah, majority of the rich people, you see them, they worship paganite gods and all that. And you just check the source of money. No, it's not the... It's not, it's not the money of purity. It's a money of impurity and blood. And God will not accept you. But you go to church and you will testify, oh, see, I got a new car. What is the source of the money, brother? Huh? And I will tell you what, God still loves you. Why? Because you have been baptized. You have been, um, you have, you have been accepted as the child of God, because you accepted the name of Jesus some time ago, right? But you never lived your life according to the doctrines and teachings of Jesus. But you continue to move on, move on, move on, move on. You never look back, you never introspect, or maybe you introspect and you're hiding the truth. You never confess that. Yeah, when you go to God, you always praise Him and worship Him. Some people have you seen? That's a nice technique. They praise and worship God, appreciating, oh God, you are great, oh God of wonders and God of love and compassion. And they say, Amen, by hallelujah. And they leave the place. Right? You are trying to be a hypocrite. Or you are not trying, you are a hypocrite. You are acting before men and God. And what, you know, God will do. Since you have accepted the name of Jesus, he still loves you. And he gives you that second chance, third chance, a millionth chance. And you are not repenting. You're hiding the secret. And you know what he does? He comes heavy upon you. Ah, I'll read that verse. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. The psalmist says. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. Drought, you know, in the summer seasons you get into drought. No, no water. No agriculture. No food. No harvest. Animals are starving. And they are dead. Many people are starving. Three meals are, have become one meals now. Yeah, such will be the situation. And you know what? God will bring the drought in your life. He will take off that job through which you are manipulating and earning that money of blood, huh? money of bribery. Probably he will inflict you with some sickness and disease where you are not able to lie to your wife again. Why? Because you need your wife to take care of you and you will be transformed to that man of truth. <laughs> you want to play with God, huh? Try it out. Try it out. He's going to forgive you. I'm telling you. He's a God of mercy and compassion. His mercies are everlasting. He's bound to compassion, slow to anger. Psalm 145, 8 and 9 says that. Right? I agree. Psalm 103, verse 11. Psalm 147, 11 says that he's full of mercies. But there is a limit for his mercy is what Psalm 103, 9 says that. He will not hold his anger forever. Neither will he be tolerant. Right? Strive with him, striving with the spirit of man forever. He won't strive. One day will come where he will come heavy upon you. And I will tell you what, that is good for you. Why? Because he did not walk out of your life. He's still living with you. He's still tolerant. He still loves you. And that's why he punishes you. He chastises you. Proverbs 3 and 11, you, 3, 11 and 12, you take and read. As how a father chastises a son, God chastises us and do not despise. Do not despise means what? Don't say, no God, I don't want punishment. I love my luxury. And you know what? God will not come heavy upon you. He will say, fine, live in luxury here and go to hell there. After white throne judgment. And he will walk off your life. And this believer, if he is a good believer or if she is a good believer in Christ, after God inflicts them with that sickness or takes away the job or uh, probably his child has become mischievous and something like that, some problem, the person will repent. Like how David repents. When he spoke about Bathsheba's sin, that sin with Bathsheba, and he says, I sinned before God. And he repents, and God blessed his son. Solomon was born after that. 
that child it got got killed and solomon was blessed by god and that's how that uh, that's how we commemorates the temple of god ah huh? you understand if you're a, if you're a true believer in christ after god <clears throat> comes heavy upon you you are not going to do the same sin again you are not going to bury that secret right inside your heart again you are going to confess repent reconcile i taught you 3 hours right revive reconcile repent and reconcile yeah revive in revival in spirit repent for your sins reconcile with god 3 hours and god comes heavy upon you yeah it's nice that god come heavy upon you why because only then you have obtained that forgiveness from god ultimately it's connected to the law of forgiveness only then you are able to forgive others why because all these days you were living in dark you were on the side of the devil and devil is not going to forgive anyone he is a destroyer he is a murderer he is an avenger and now your attitude changes you let go everything that has been hard for you to forgive and god also forgave you forgave you why because you came to your senses Beloved, you're 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 listening to me or what? Your understanding? These are all interconnected. All right, I want to stop here. We will continue from verse number five in the next session. Right? God brings a lot of droughts in your life, and today, if you are in drought, time for you to introspect because there is something wrong that you have done against men and God. Repent, repent. Come to your senses. Ask God to forgive you. Confess, and therefore God is able to. get you on the right side may god bless us heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity we appreciate your grace we appreciate your mercies oh lord thank you for this beautiful teaching thank you lord for helping us to think over it and help us to come to light in jesus name we pray amen god bless you subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlist spend time to listen to all of these believers unbelievers whoever may be you are all children of god god loves you jesus loves you all right i will meet you soon and continue to remember me i am your brother yeah continue to remember me continue to remember my ministries and please ask god to lead me in the right direction thank you god bless you